Welcome to episode 4 of How to Become an Animator. In this episode, we talk Animation Mentor. almost the whole episode and realized that the camera didn't capture any of it. Alright, back to the story. So we left off at the Ken's Film Festival, I had just seen Dragons 2, and I had just decided I wanted to be an animator, and the only school I really know about that I could apply to is Animation Mentor. Throughout college I was trying to figure out what it would take to be an animator if that's what I wanted to do. And I was doing a lot of research to figure out, could I just stay in school, what major would I be, what would I do to get there. And when I finally decided that I did want to be an animator, I realized that the best way to get there was not going to be through regular school. Pretty much everybody I had talked to who was in the industry told me that regular school with an animation focus could only get you so far, and eventually you needed to go break off into a specific animation program that was going to take you to where you needed to be to get hired. Because the programs at regular schools are just too broad. They give you a week in CG, a week in 2D, a week in stop motion, and you just kind of touch everything and you don't really dive in deep enough to really learn what you need to know to be successful. That seems to be the problem that most students are facing when they leave regular colleges, CSUs, UCs, that kind of thing. Everyone gets out of school excited to go animate and realizes when they see other people's reels that they didn't learn any of those things during their programs. That's why Animation Mentor was created 11 or 12 years ago. The founders realized that everyone was going to school for animation, but nobody was learning enough to actually go get a job from it. So they started a school that would be taught by actual people in the industry that would train students on what they needed to know from an industry standpoint. And there are other animation schools out there and other online ones, but Animation Mentor was the first, and it's the one I went to, and it was fantastic. The main program is six different classes, from Animation Basics on to finishing your portfolio and polishing your reel. Each class is broken up into 12 weeks or three months, so the whole thing takes about 18 months, a year and a half to complete. And you don't necessarily have to do the whole thing, but if you want to be an animator, you probably should. And that program is all about character animation. They also have specific workshops for creature animation, big monsters, dragons, that kind of stuff. Those workshops are supposed to be for when you get a little bit more advanced, probably class four out of six, somewhere around there. And they also have other workshops for game animation, cartoony styles, things like that. And if you're interested in doing 3D animation, Maya is probably the software you're gonna use, is what the school uses, and that's what most studios are gonna be using unless they have their own system they've built. So in June or July of 2014, I started Animation Mentor. When you sign up for a class, you have a bunch of different options of different time slots and mentors of who's going to teach you that class. Now all the classes have online lectures you get to watch and Google Hangouts class time with your mentor and all the other students to go over work or have them teach you stuff or whatever it is they want to do in that session. Every week you submit an assignment and the mentors do a recorded draw over of your work and they explain what you could do better and what you have to improve on and what you did well. And you can watch that as many times as you like. All the assignments at Animation Mentor are due on Sunday at noon depending on your time zone which means that for about a year and a half, I did not sleep a single Saturday night. So class one is Animation Basics, which I had with Jay Davis, an ex-Disney animator. The first class is supposed to get you comfortable with posing and using Maya and understanding the principles of animation. weeks later I moved on to class 2, Body Mechanics. For this class I had Scott Lemmer at DreamWorks Animation, who is now at Blue Sky actually, and he introduced to me the concept of video reference. The idea is that you film yourself doing whatever action that you're expecting to animate because you need to be able to watch it back and understand what the hips and the shoulders are all doing to work together to show you the body mechanics of how that shot's going to play out. In class 2 you're given characters with full bodies but no faces because that's a lot more to have to deal with. The assignments are mostly focused on how to pose an entire character which includes some of the same types of posing exercises we saw before, as well as a full body mechanic shot.
class down and we're on to advanced body mechanics, which I had with Mike Gassaway, who animated and directed a lot of the Jimmy Neutron episodes. Advanced body mechanics gets into more complex motions. Now if you want to animate body mechanics or physicality shots, something that really helps out is to do a sport or another physical activity. Since I do parkour, I had a whole bunch of video reference of myself doing different moves that I could use for animation. And the best part is since I used to teach parkour, I was able to communicate effectively what the motions were you needed to accomplish, and so I knew very easily how to translate that into animation. So I just pulled some clips from my demo reel, and that's what I animated. When you hit class 4, Intro to Acting, is when you get the characters with the full facial controls, which are really fun. For that class I had Keith Sente of Industrial Light and Magic, and the big one there was to do dialogue tests, to take audio clips from movies, TV, radio, and bring them into your shot and animate them in a different context than they originally were done. Usually you come up with a couple different audio choices and present it to your mentor and your classmates and everyone kind of gives some feedback on what they think the best one would be. So I took a clip from the office and made it a scout leader. Before hoes. Why? Because your bros are always there for you. They have got your back after your hoe rips your heart out for no good reason. Bros before hoes. Why? Because your bros are always there for you. They have got your back after your hoe rips your heart out for no good reason. Now class five is advanced acting, which I had with Steve Cady of Sony Imageworks. Now my biggest problem up to this point was I didn't really have a workflow nailed down. I knew what I wanted to animate but I didn't really know the best way to get there. And I got some weird advice in that class where it kind of shot me in the foot. I was told kind of don't follow the video reference. You have it there for a guide, but you don't really want to use it because that's cheating if you use it too closely. This is terrible advice. I actually barely made it through that class because I wasn't able to get most of my shot done. For this class, I was supposed to do a two character acting shot. So I chose a clip from Bruce Almighty with Jim Carrey and Jennifer Aniston. And I filmed reference for it, but I was told not to really follow it too closely. So I had to kind of make up a lot of other stuff. And it became this kind of floaty mess that looked like this. I mean, I know I woke up this morning and I felt like, like my boobs were bigger. I mean, do they look bigger to you? Uh, what? Or, um, hmm? No, uh, bigger. Oh, come on. Look at them. Please. They are definitely bigger. I mean, look, they feel huge to me. Well, listen, I uh, have to go. But this has been the brass back. Brass. Thank you. And I never really got it finished. But that's what I ended up with. I filmed some really solid reference for that piece, but I didn't get to really use a whole lot of it. Then I got to class six, the final class, where you kind of put together everything you've learned. You might go back and fix some of your old shots. You might do a brand new shot. It's all about understanding what you're about to do for your demo reel and going forward from there. I had Sean Sexton as a mentor, who was a supervising animator at DreamWorks Animation, and he looked all my work up to that point, ending in that last shot. He also saw the video reference for that shot. One of the things he told me was that I should have used the reference. You don't want to just rotoscope and copy every little frame of it or something because you need to exaggerate and push poses and make it look like animation, make it look good. But he gave me a choice. He said I could do a brand new shot, whatever I wanted, or I could go back and redo that last shot using my reference more closely. Now I had already listened to that audio clip for about 11 weeks straight, so I knew every little intonation in the dialogue. Figured I may as well just redo it. I know the dialogue so well, I could probably jump right back in and do it better. So for the next 10 weeks or so, I listened to it again for almost six months straight. I listened to the same clip from Bruce Almighty, and I will never be able to forget it. But I ended up making tweaks to my reference and redoing the entire shot, and it looks a lot better than it did. I mean, I know, I woke up this morning and I felt like, like my boobs were bigger. I mean, do they look bigger to you? Uh, what? Or, um, hmm? No. Uh, bigger? Oh, come on! Look at them! Please! They are definitely bigger! I mean, look, they feel huge to me. So just for comparison, here's the old shot, and here's the new version. 
I mean, I know I woke up this morning and I felt like like my boobs were bigger. I mean, do they look bigger to you? Uh, what? Or, um, hmm? No. Uh, bigger? Oh, come on! Look at them! Please! They are definitely bigger. I mean, look, they feel huge to me. Huh? I mean, I know I woke up this morning and I felt like like my boobs were bigger. I mean, do they look bigger to you? Uh, what? Or, um, hmm? No. Uh, bigger? Oh, come on! Look at them! Please! They are definitely bigger. I mean, look, they feel huge to me. Huh? I mean, I know I woke up this morning and I felt like, like my boobs were bigger. I mean, do they look bigger to you? Uh, what? Or, um, hmm? No. Uh, bigger? Oh, come on! Look at them! Please! They are definitely bigger! I mean, look, they feel huge to me! Huh? It's a pretty big difference, even though I never quite finished either one. Class 6 was by far my favorite, and so if you are going to do Animation Mentor, do the whole program. Get all the way to Class 6 and finish that. Because you also get a lot of alumni perks. I still get access to all the stuff Animation Mentor is doing, I can take other classes if I want to, I still have access to all the video lectures, and I'm still part of the community, so I can go and look at other people's work and see what they're doing and comment back and forth, it's great. And for graduation, everybody always meets up at CTN, which is every year, which I think I mentioned before, but you have to go to CTN. I'll talk about it more another time, but it's great to be able to go to an event and meet all these people that you've had classes with from all over the world, that has always just been a screen relationship, and you meet them in person. But it's a great way to make a bunch of friends all over the world that you never thought you'd ever meet, and you all have the same common interest in animation. It's really cool. Now meanwhile, through the entire program, I had moved twice. I moved to Minnesota for a while, back to LA, and both places I had a full-time job. And towards the end of the program, I just wanted to focus on Animation Mentor. I just wanted to finish strong and not have to worry about work. So I ended up quitting my job, which in LA, with the amount that rent costs, that was hard to do. And so at the very end of the program, I had pretty much run out of money. And I ended up creating my own business to teach Microsoft Office and train business people through Chambers of Commerce how to use Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the whole thing. And not just the basic use, but actually really use it for work. So I did that, which paid rent for a while, which was really great, along with all the other projects that I had been doing, kind of like what I was doing in college. I was making short films, I was making videos, I was doing all kinds of cool stuff, learning new software, trying to keep learning more. And during the time I was going to CTN, like I mentioned. And the first time I went to CTN, I met someone who's now a really good friend of mine who worked at DreamWorks, Victor. So we kept in contact. And a year later, at the next CTN, it was almost the end of my animation mentor, and I had already quit my job and I was doing that office thing. We got dinner, we were talking, and he ended up telling me about an opening in his department, in the training department at DreamWorks. He asked me some questions, gave me some tips on my resume, all that kind of stuff, and he said I should apply, so I did. Now, I would never have gone to the first CTN if it hadn't been for Paul, the instructor at Kenyatta College, in the last episode. For that second year of CTN, I was living in Minnesota at the time, and I flew out to hang out with Animation Mentor people for the big graduation event. And the third time I went to CTN, which was this last November, I was working at DreamWorks. So all the events in these stories were starting to overlap and come together, and things were starting to really happen. About a week before my last Animation Mentor class, I got an email from DreamWorks to schedule a phone call. After the phone call, they scheduled an interview. It was really awesome just to even go on campus and just see what DreamWorks looked like and meet some of the people. The interview process was a whole story in itself, and I'll tell that another time. And I ended up telling my whole Animation Mentor class on that very last class, here's how it went, I think it went well, we'll see. The very last day of my Animation Mentor term, final class, everything, I got a phone call that day from the recruiter, and I got offered the position in the training department at DreamWorks. And I can say with certainty that I would not have gotten there if it weren't for all the things I had done up to that point. From all the goofy projects I had been doing on the side, the stuff I did at Kenyatta College, the stuff I did at Animation Mentor, it all came together and I landed the job. So if you're looking for an animation school, I highly recommend Animation Mentor. They are not paying me to say any of this, this is my own opinion, and I'm behind them 100%. It is a fantastic school and you should check it out. Anyways, that's the year and a half, 18 months of Animation Mentor. Remember that if you're enjoying this, subscribe down below, thumbs up, and comment any questions you have or anything you wanna know. And if you wanna see what the day-to-day -day stuff looks like, Instagram, Snapchat, I post a bunch of stuff, it's kinda fun. Now in the next episode, I'm going to go in depth of my actual interview at DreamWorks so that you have an idea of what that looked like. Believe me, that was a crazy experience. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Thanks for watching episode four of How to Become an Animator.